Sorry. Right, be silent now, please. Who's got that? Welcome, we're live. Hello, Nick Gamston. Uh, my name's Rachel. If you're joining us live, it's great to see you. And maybe you can tell us you're here and say hello in the comments section. Uh, if you're watching back, perhaps you might want to uh, just give yourself half an hour or so to watch the whole of our um, service this afternoon. Um, I'm Rachel, as I've said, and we have Chris here. Hi, Chris. Hi, Rachel. It's good Hi, to see you. everyone. Where are you? What What are you doing? Well, at the moment, I'm uh, I'm actually in Cambridge uh, with my son and helping him sort out his new house with his with his lovely wife. So uh, yeah, it's a bit different from sitting in my own living room. So I've got this exciting white background, um, but I'm pleased to be able to join you through the wonders of virtual technology. It's brilliant. So our theme today is always home. It is. Home is a place where we belong, where we can know forgiveness and acceptance and can come back all down the years. And this is true of our human family, and it's also true of our Heavenly Father God. Uh, so what's happening today is uh -huh. we have a, a worship song, and then we've got a family activity that involves standing up. So... Oh, yeah, watch on a big screen, um, as big a screen as possible, uh, and somewhere where you can turn the sound up so that you can be involved while you're standing up. Brilliant. We also have uh, a family reading from the Bible, and then a talk from our vicar Mark and his daughter Millie, keeping on the family involvement theme. Oh, and at the end, we'll have some prayers uh, that you can contribute to. And, and the worship song. So altogether, probably we're going to be um, 35 or 40 minutes. Fab. And I think we might even be um, hearing from some other members of Connect Gamsden as well during the service. Um, I think Lynn and John might be coming along too. Um, and so you told us we need to have some space. My children are watching in a different room. They may come and join us. Hi, Emma. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Andy. Hope you're enjoying your biscuits. You got some biscuits, Chris? Uh, I haven't got any biscuits. Oh. No, no. I have tea at least. Uh, I have a glass of water, so that's uh, that's going to be good. I might need that later on. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, we you've told us we're going to start with um, some worship. So we, John has very John's another person we're seeing today. Uh, John has recorded us some um, worship. We're going to be singing a song. Um, you might want to just use this time to to think about. Um, coming into God's presence. It's uh, Great Are You, Lord, is the song we're going to sing. I know Zoe said last week that her children like to dance to the worship, so I hope we've got some space for that, girls. Um, and shall we just take a moment to think about why we're here this afternoon? Lord God, thank you that you are great, and um, we want to tell you that you're so great. And let us just um, spend some time this afternoon in your presence. Amen. Amen.
Hello again. Well, thank you very much, John, for leading us in that worship. Now, we uh, come to our family activity time. Last week, Zoe said that what um, her family really likes to do, um, as Rachel said, was to join in with bits of these video services. So now is that time. In our story, that we'll hear later, but this is before the story is read to us. In our story, there's a man who has a grown up son. And that means the man is old enough uh, to be a granddad, a bit like me, although I'm not a granddad. Uh, one sentence in the Bible that we'll hear tells us that he did five lovely things for his grown up son. And uh, we've got an opportunity now to do all five of those things. So uh, don't worry, you don't have to remember what they are. Um, I'll lead us through them one at a time. And if you have enough space, you could stand up for the actions. Um, and if you're watching on your own, imagine that you have someone else that you love with you. So the first action that the father did for the son when he was still a long way away out of the house, the father saw him. He saw his son. So are you standing up now? Can you see other people in the room? Not just out of the corner of your eye. Really look at someone and notice them. Are they happy or sad? Are they cross or are they full of fun? He saw him. Okay, number two of the five activities. He was filled with compassion. That's a funny word, uh, compassion, but it means he was on his son's side. He wanted to make it better. And maybe you know what that's like in your family when someone else in your family wants to make it better. So now look at someone in your room. And as a sign that you are on their side, Put your hand on your heart like this. And that is being filled with compassion, showing that you love them. Now, the third thing that he did um, is that he ran to his son. So before I get comments saying this is highly irresponsible, uh, encouraging our family members to run around our living room, we're not actually going to run because we can't do that inside. But the man ran down the road to meet his son. But just think for a minute, if you've um, got someone that you love and you're seeing them after a while, maybe you've seen a grandparent after lockdown or something like that, what would you do if you came to meet someone that you love? You might open your arms like this. You can't see the hands on the end of my arms, but you can see what I'm doing. So as you run to meet someone, just imagine that you are doing this and you can actually stick your arms out like that if you like. Number four, he threw his arms around him. So if you're like that, then you are ready to throw your arms around someone else. And you can actually give one person in your family a hug right now. Why not? Or you can pretend to do it. And then finally, remember, this is a grown up man, a granddad age man with his grown up son. It says he kissed him. Now, some people love kisses and some people really don't like kisses at all. But you can kiss the person that you've just hugged, kiss them now or kiss someone else to show that you love them. Well, that's all five actions. Did you join in? Did you enjoy it? Did you have a laugh with your family? OK. That's the end of that. So now we're going to move on to a different section of the service. Uh, Phil, 
and Monica and Martha are going to read the whole story from which I've just picked out those five actions. And I think Anya uh, and Theo might chip in as well along the way. So it's a whole family activity. And then our vicar Mark and his daughter Millie are going to tell us a bit more about that story. And while they're doing that, uh, you can use the comments opportunity on your Facebook page to join in with Mark's questions that he's going to be asking us, or you can get a pencil and paper to draw along to participate with the talk. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Hi everyone. It's good to be with you at Connect Gamston this afternoon. My name's Mark. I'm the vicar at St Luke's and I'm here with Millie, my daughter. And we've been thinking together about this great story that Jesus told and we've just heard together. So a big thank you to Phil and Monica and Martha for reading it to us this afternoon. Of course, it's a bit strange because we're not all together at the school where we normally meet, but we're all here at home. And, you know, when you think about being at home, what makes you feel at home? That's a question that you could ask each other right now. Perhaps you could use the comments to, um, to, 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 to reply to that question. But what makes you feel at home? What about you, Millie? So I feel at home when I don't have to worry about what other people are thinking about me and I can just be myself. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel at home when everything's familiar. I know what, where things are, where they belong, where they should be. And also I feel safe. Mm. And I think uh, I feel at home when I feel welcome. And one of the things that always makes me feel welcome uh, is our little dog, Rufus who, when you come in, starts running around the house and squealing, and he just seems so happy to see you. Mm. And, and I feel a bit like that. That sense of being welcoming is really important, isn't it? Um, whenever we go to see Grandma and Granddad or Grandma and Grandpa, um, that first thing when you go into the house and you receive this huge hug makes you feel welcome straight away and at home. And that's one of the things we're all missing at the moment, isn't it? We're, we're missing that touch. We're missing that ability to, to hug, hug one another and welcome one another. So many of us who do feel at home with our family and friends perhaps don't really know how important that is um, and how fortunate we are to have that. So in Jesus' story, there was a young man who didn't really feel comfortable at home with his dad and brother. And so he took half of his dad's money and ran away. And there are many people that today, right now, who perhaps don't feel at home where they live even. And they don't feel at home, they don't feel welcome, they don't feel safe, they don't feel accepted for who they are with their family or maybe with the people they work with or the people they're at school with. And perhaps one of the reasons Jesus told this story 
was to, to remind us that however we're feeling, we can always feel at home and welcome with God. What do you think this story is about? One of the questions I always ask is, what do we think this story tells us about God? I wonder if that's a question that you could answer. What do you think this story shows you about God? What are you, Millie? So sometimes it's easy to think that because God is so much bigger and different to us that he doesn't feel. Uh, actually, I've always thought that if God is so much bigger and more powerful than us, um, then maybe he feels things even more strongly than we do. Mm. I mean, Jesus used the figure of the Father in this story to show us what God is like. And I think the first thing that makes me think of is that this Father feels so much pain. The Son really hurt the Father when he left home. And we read that even when, when the Son finally decided to come back home, even when he was far off, the Father saw him. I wonder how many tears he cried for his son. I wonder how many days he'd spent looking out for him. And now finally he sees him. And I think you can tell how much love this father has for his son. When he runs up and he gives him a hug and a kiss. Um, and God has that love for us as he accepts us and he forgives us. And we're so precious to him. Mm. Uh, and I also think um, as they go home and the father is so just can't wait to throw this big party mm. and celebrate um, that his son has come home. And um, I think maybe we think God is all serious when actually he's full of more joy than we could ever imagine having. Mm. Mm. The story shows us that our God is a passionate God. He feels things really deeply. He can feel hurts and pain when we turn away from him and reject him. He has a huge love for us. He accepts us and welcomes us. He's more joyful than we could ever imagine. And then finally the story shows us that like this father, his arms are always outstretched for us. There's nowhere we, we can get to in life. We can never go too far where he can't reach us and bring us home. I think uh, so Emma's just popped in and she just told me that what makes her feel at home is the cuddles that she gets I must be doing something right as a mum there then uh, I can see Sarah says she feels at home when she's surrounded by her family I think I probably feel at home when I know I can stick my slippers on when I come through the door uh, Mark also just asked us didn't he what what does this story tell us about God I wonder if you've had a think about that I've uh, Note down he said about uh, God hurts with us. He loves us. I love that idea of God like, throwing us a party. How cool does that sound? Never really thought about God throwing us a party. Anyway, we're going to um, hear a bit more from Mark and Millie in a second. But first, uh, I'm thinking as well when, uh, about God. Um, what does this story tell us about God? How God wants to be with us for a long time. He's not just about a Sunday kind of relationship, maybe a bit longer. Um, Emma and I met up with John and Lynn Miles this week, um, who have been in their relationship for a long time. Um, and it was so lovely to have them in our garden. We were socially distanced. Um, and uh, do you, would you like to see what happened? I think we've got a little video. So hello, would you like to just introduce yourselves? Okay, um, I'm Lynn Miles. I'm John Miles. <laughs> and uh, so you live in Gamston. What's lockdown been like for you guys? It's been okay. <laughs> really. quite, quite bearable. Yeah. We've managed to do quite a lot and a lot of DIY and Brilliant. been out for walks and etc. And you're still smiling. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lots of sewing, uh, writing stories for our grandchildren. So every week a new chapter to their story. Wow, <laughs> lovely. Which has been good. Um, and so tell us a bit about your your married and how what's family how long have you been married? Uh, fifty four 54. years this month. Um, and um, strangely enough, 
uh, he proposed to me after uh, three weeks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you said yes. And I said yes. <laughs> she was on to a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, and I don't regret it at all. <laughs> so have there been times? Um, you don't have to be too personal. Um, <laughs> has life always been wonderful, or what? What would be your top tips for um, still smiling after fifty-four years? Um, I think you have to do things apart as well as together. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you do a lot of singing and sewing and things i do a lot of diy and gardening and you know going out walks sometimes on my own it's uh, yeah you've got to it's no good being on top of one another all the time yeah, yeah. I think that's where a lot of retired couples make a mistake yeah. yeah 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 so it's so, um, but you know we do things like pre-lockdown going to concerts and Oh, yeah. ballet and things so that's things we do together and so on yeah. and of course um john is, is always there for practical things so you know when i was church warden he was just brilliant just Get fairly busy busy yeah yeah, yeah. Well, you do a lot of sewing as well don't you yeah you do. Yeah, so. She has her own sewing room which is great oh, yeah. she can get up and <laughs> sew yeah. and uh... yeah. and do so what, how, what would be your tips for dealing with falling out? Have you fallen? Have there been oh, times yeah. when you've fallen out? <laughs> oh, of course. Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. You have your ups and downs. <laughs> I ju we'd just walk away. <laughs> walk away. Walk away. <laughs> you could just go and fume somewhere else. <laughs> and, then, and then resolve it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, one of our, I think he was an usher at our wedding, he said, just a tip. He said, never let the sun set. On an argument, sort it out before you go to bed. Yes. So we're coming back to our story then. I wonder why Jesus told this story. Well, in this case, I think it's because there were some people in his day, the religious leaders, who didn't like the people that Jesus used to hang out with. Jesus would meet up with anyone. He didn't care what they'd done or what other people thought about them. But the religious leaders didn't like these kind of people. They thought they were the kind of people that God couldn't possibly care about. So Jesus came up with a story where the main character was someone that when people heard the story, they would know that this character had done something terribly wrong. Just think about it. This young man, he effectively went up to his dad and said, Dad, I can't wait for you to die. Can you imagine that? That's terrible, isn't it? When you die, I'll get half of everything you have. Well, I want it now. Perhaps his father had to sell some of the things he owned. Maybe he had to sell some of the farm that they lived on. And then this young man took all that money and wasted it all. And now he's sitting amongst the pigs eating pig food. Well, anyone who'd heard this story would immediately think, this young man is a disgrace. This young man is bad, done bad things. This young man is messed up. This young man is unforgivable. What he's done. Well, as far as the Pharisees were concerned, the religious leaders of the day, they just had one label. As far as they were concerned, this young man, like all the other people Jesus hung out with, was a sinner. I wonder if we sometimes think about people and put labels on them. Perhaps they've done something to hurt us. Perhaps they're just so different from us. Perhaps they're too cool or maybe uncool. Perhaps they've done something that seems unforgivable to us. Or perhaps even they're a Derby, Camp, Derby County fan. Um, it could be anything, but I wonder if we've stopped looking and treating people as a unique person who God made and cares for, and instead we just see a bunch of labels. Uh, now the father in this story was different. 
He didn't mind how dirty or smelly his son was. He threw his arms around him anyway. Um, he didn't even let his son finish talking about these labels. It was as if he'd ripped them all off. He just told everyone, this is my child. He was lost and now is found. Now, God is like this and God only cares about one label. And that is that we are all the children of God. So just to, just to come, as we come to the end then, I wonder why Jesus told the story. Well, firstly, perhaps it's to challenge religious people like those leaders back in his time, but perhaps sometimes like people like you and me, people who take God seriously. Sometimes we can be quite judgmental. We can look at people, see perhaps that they're different, see things about them, and, and it's as if we stick labels on them. Perhaps God wants us to, ch to challenge us, wants us to see people like he sees them, as people who are his beloved children, who have so much potential, people who he's longing to come home to him. Secondly, perhaps Jesus told this story because sometimes we live with a bunch of labels on us, things we believe about ourselves and things that other people have told us about ourselves and they stick and they hurt. Perhaps we need to know today that God wants to come and rip them all off and he only wants one label to be put on. He wants us to know that we're his children, that we're always welcome with him, that we can always feel at home with him. Wow, thank you so much, Mark and Millie. That was some great things to hear. In a moment, uh, we're going to do some praying. And if you want to put some of your prayers as we chat into um, the comment section, then that would be wonderful. Um, my phone's just timed out. That's good. Um, but before we do that, um, let's have a little time to think about what Mark and Millie have shared. I wonder, perhaps you're in that um, first camp and you want to think about... Um, the labels that you might have put on other people it's quite easy to do isn't it sometimes not meaning to be but we can be quite judgmental and attach labels to other people and we forget to see people how god really sees them and then there was the other thing about maybe there's labels that we stick on ourselves and that really like millie said the only label that we have is child of god i love that so perhaps you need to put on your glasses, have a little look at those around you um, or yourself. And remember, with that filter that says, I'm a child of God. It's worth thinking about, isn't it? So while we've been um, just doing the service, I've drawn around my hands. These are my hands and I've attached them to a piece of string. This might be something you want to do as a family in a bit. Um, I know a lot of us have found that um, being in a home, those comforting hands, um, and maybe there are people that need a hug. So Daniel's drawn his as well, his damn hands. You might not be able to see them actually. Can you see that? Probably not, it's a bit faint. Um, but we're gonna think about who might need to have a comforting hug uh, sent to them, even though it's, it's not quite as good as a real hug, is it? But some paper hand hugs. That might be something that you work on as a family later. Um, hopefully we might get some prayers in a minute coming through, Chris, but um, I shall hand over to you. Um, people are having a think perhaps about their God lost. Okay, thank you very much, Rachel. Lovely to see those cut out hands of yours that pick up really nicely on the theme that's been running through this whole service. So we're going to be... Um, praying now and praying is um, sometimes people are a bit bothered about praying but praying really is simply talking to our father God and so um, we're going to pray for ourselves and then for our Gamston community 
and then we're going to say together the words of what we call the Lord's Prayer, and they'll be popping up on the screen in a few minutes. So um, if it helps you to uh, close your eyes and put your hands together to pray, you can do that, but you don't have to do that. You can stay looking at the screen if you like. So let's, let's pray. Let's talk to our Father God. Father God, we thank you so much that... Uh, we are always welcome, that you are always home to us, whatever we have done. And we want to know more and more that we are your father, that uh, <laughs> you are our father and that we are your father. holding us in your love. Father, we pray for our community of Gamston, people maybe who don't feel at home, have been unsettled by the whole lockdown thing, people who are frightened um, as the change in the rules happens this weekend, or people um, who don't know you as a father at all. We pray that they would feel at home. Um, and if people have been feeling like that younger son who was absolutely fed up when he was stuck away in a foreign country, we pray that they will feel welcomed home by you and accepted and know mm -hmm. that you can be close to them, that you are close to them, that you are on their side. Lord, we don't know all the people out there. We know some of them. We don't know all of them. But you know every single heart and every single life. And we pray that you will touch them now. Um, just picking up, Rachel's um, uh, talked about people who are lonely, uh, mentally or physically, people who feel isolated and alone. God, I pray that you would really bring your relief and your comfort to them, that they would know that all down the years you're with them. Okay, we will um, join together now in saying the Lord's Prayer as I uh, lead us in those words. Just wait for them to pop up. There we are. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Always. Amen. Amen. That's great. And we're going to join together with a song, um, Good, Good Father. And it just reminds us again, if there's a one thing you can take away from today is that label um, on that Millie and Mark showed us that everybody is a child of God. You can call yourself a child of God. Um, so let's sing that together, shall we?
Oh, it's so great to be hearing my um, John's worship, isn't it? it? Takes us back to those times when we were at the school. It's wonderful. Right, that's coming to the end of our service. Um, but it doesn't end there, does it, Chris? What's happening in the next couple of weeks? Um, yes, there are uh, a few things coming up. There's going to be um, uh, some notices on the screen at the end of the service. Um, next week um, on Sunday at the same time, um, we, uh, we we're not having a service, but we'll we'll have a Facebook post, a, a short of some sort, to um, uh, for you to uh, share and enjoy. And then in two weeks' time, on the nineteenth, we will have another service like that. Um, so in between. On this Tuesday, the 7th of July, we're doing something which we've actually never done before. So it's an adventure for all of us. We're going to um, have a prayer meeting on the green by the old village hall. That's not not near Morrison's, but in the old Gamston village by the little hall there. We're, we're going to have a prayer time. And that's going to be a time when we're not just talking, but we're listening to God to see um, what he wants to say to us about Connect Gamston and Gamston community. So um, that might not be uh, something that people have done before, but anyone is welcome to come in and uh, join in that. That sounds great. Brilliant. Well, it's uh, one day we will get to see each other in person again, but that nice socially distanced time to come together on Tuesday sounds like lots of fun too. Um, but, well, sh shall I pray to end and um, then we can uh, go about our weekends? Lord God, thank you for this time where we've uh, been able to hear about your love for us and um, how you accept us and you welcome us home. And Lord, as we go out into our week, would you help us to um, think about the people around us with your glasses on, with seeing them as you see them, um, not being judgmental and seeing ourselves in the same way. Lord, would we help take your love into our community? In Jesus' name, amen. And maybe if you want your family to be sending a virtual hug to those people that are still lonely, that we can't actually physically hug, then there's a job for the afternoon too.
We will continue to um, pick up if you write comments on the Facebook page or below me, I think it is now, there's the um, address for emails that Rachel was pointing to earlier. So you can send a prayer request or any other message to connect Camston and we will pick it up and yes. um, respond appropriately to that. So God bless all of you and all of your families uh, until next time and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.